Hello and welcome to another edition of the Rolling Illini. I am Joshua Joins, joined as always by Avery Schaefer and Miles Hill and Andrew Scalier with UPTV. Today we have a special guest in our uh, studio with the News Gazette, so uh, thank you so much for joining us. Um, it's been a couple weeks, guys, so uh, how's everybody doing? It's uh, It's been uh, quite a, ri- a wild ride <laughs> hosting the show without my two cronies here. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> As, as mentioned, Miles and I have been out of town the, both the last two weekends traveling with the Illinois wheelchair basketball team, uh, and we're going to get right to it. So two weeks ago, we went to Edinburgh, Pennsylvania uh, for a tournament uh, where we got to play in four games. Uh, so we'll start with the Missouri game. Uh, Miles, do you remember the Missouri game? Oh, man, it's been such a blur of this yeah. the past two weeks that Edinburgh was just... Yeah, Edinburgh feels that. like it was like a month ago. It does. It, it feels how long it, it was. So I was thinking about that the way back. I was like, there was no way we were at Edinburgh like two weeks ago. Right. Um, so in that game, uh, the University of Missouri came out super hot uh, with a 31-17 to halftime lead yeah. uh, and then continued uh, to win in the second half. They got a 63-42 to final there. Um, that was just a really fundamentally sound team. Our shooting percentage that game was 30.8%. Uh, was not great. The leading scorer for the Fighting Illini was Thomas Duffy and Kyle Jankowski, or sorry, Willie Benmore checked with 14 points, and then Thomas Duffy and Kyle Jankowski both had six points, and Gabe Dembraber had five points. Gabe's been on the show multiple times. Yeah, um, yeah so he's, he's uh, a character. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Willie also uh, contributed 17 rebounds and six assists in the loss. It was a tough loss. Uh, it was a game we wanted to pick up, but uh, I yeah. think we took a lot away from that, and... Uh, Towards the end, we ran a lineup that worked really, really well um, and kind of got us a little bit back in the game before we had to start fouling. So yeah. that was good. Then we played yep. the University of yep. Wisconsin Whitewater for the first time since the November Whitewater Tournament. Yep. Yep. Um, and at one point in that game, we actually had a 10-point lead on a team that is notoriously a powerhouse. Yep. Uh, we had a 10-point uh, lead. Uh, our longest run was 9-0. to We led at the halftime by 7, 37 to 30. Uh, felt pretty confident coming into that half. Yeah, that was a good one. Um, and then in the second half, things fell apart uh, for the University of Illinois. Uh, they went on a 42-12 to run in the second half. The Fighting Illini shot, uh, I believe, 10%? Yeah, the second yeah, half. Yeah, 10% in the one. second half. Wow. Really, really left going 3 for 29. <laughs> there was just like a lid on the rim, yeah. and it was it was palpable. So the line I fell seventy two to forty nine, but there was a lot of encouraging things that happened in that game. Yeah, especially coming off of that M- Missouri loss was like, all right, what well, we needed to show, and we all knew that we could play at a better level than we did against Missouri. Um, and coming in against Whitewater with the the halftime lead, I think we were leading at halftime. We were playing against them <coughs> in November as well, or we were close. And uh, it's just about finishing games. We know Whitewater is a strong team, and they they do a really good job of finishing games, as you can tell from the second half stats. Um, so it was just us putting together 40 uh, really good minutes like we did really, really early in the season, and, and we know we're capable of doing that as well. So yeah. it was a good boost. Uh, Willie Bidmorechuk led the team again in scoring with 22 points in that game, uh, six total rebounds uh, and four assists, but it was on 7 of 21 shooting, uh, which was also 4 of 15 from three-point land. A lot of that was in the second half. We started to take a lot of three-point shots we would have normally taken to try yeah. to get back in the game. Yeah. Um, Gabe had 10 points, Thomas Duffy had 10 points, and then Noah Hotchkiss had 7 points. Uh, for for the Wisconsin Whitewater, for those, we're going to hit Nationals here uh, very soon in the second half of the show, yep. uh, which will be here Thursday, Friday, Saturday of this week at the State Farm Center. Yes, it's sir. free for everybody to enter. Yes, sir. Uh, we highly suggest you come out uh, on Thursday. The Fighting Line at Men play at 4, the Fighting Line at Women play at 2 p.m., um, it's a 3-6 matchup. We're playing the UTA. We'll get into that. Uh, yep, but we yep. beat them earlier this season. But one of the players that you're really going to want to watch if if you come to the game that's not on the Illinois team is uh, Wisconsin Whitewater's Dylan Fishbach. He was 7 for 18, uh, 3 for 4 from 2 point lanes, 4 for 14 from 3 point lane, but he had hit 15 threes in the game before us. Yeah. Um, and so he ended up with 20 points. He's a really electric player. Um, yeah. I, didn't he win best player in the he league? Won player this year? The year this he won year, player yeah. of the year this year. He won player so, of the year this year. So it's a guy that you got to watch out for and someone who's in everyone's game plan. Yeah. 
So exactly. that was the Wisconsin Whitewater game. Yeah. Uh, there were four games this tournament, which was actually more than usual um, for us. So the next game, come on, work with me. There we go. Uh, <laughs> was against the home team Edinburgh. Ooh. This was the last game of the weekend, actually, and um, it was not really what we were hoping for. No. Uh, we actually played Auburn before this. I I went in the wrong order. Oh, Auburn yeah. game was a win. Yes. Uh, but due to weather coming into Champaign and us wanting to get back on time, we played back to back for the first time all season. So yeah. it was really we finished one game and then we warmed up for the next game and it was Edinburgh. Yeah. Um and so for that game, the final score of that game was fifty to fifty one. It was a really, really hard fought game. Uh, and this was the game where we had an incredible comeback in the second half. Yeah, because that first half was a yeah. rough one. The in the first half, the fighting Illini uh shot twenty two point two percent, six for twenty seven. Um, and we were down 20 at the half, 40 to 20, and fought our way back. We had 30, or uh, we outscored them 31 to 18 in the second half, running a different lineup than we normally ran with. Um, who was in that lineup? Johnny McNamara, uh, Noah, Do- Noah Doggo, Doggo, Willie, and Willie, Gabe, maybe Gabe. I I, Gabe was in that lineup, and uh, yeah. yeah, Gabe went five for eight, five for seven from two point land for 10 points. Um, Willie Benmore, Chuck, had 29 points in that game, 11 mm-hmm. rebounds and 4 assists. Uh, that second half group really lit a fire, and, and we were right in that game to the very end. Uh, yeah. It was it was a 7-point loss, but I think at one point we cut the lead down to 2. To 2, yeah. To 2 with a minute to go. Gabe fouls out right. of the game, and that was the, the, the big thing that we were doing was we were playing two bigs. Um, yeah. And we right. didn't and that, have another big to that play. That Germany offense really, yeah. really changed it. And, and the thing about it that was so... So crazy for us was we went Germany earlier in the year and it doesn't really work out for us. A lot of us like just yeah. Germany is such an unorth- unorthodox lineup for those that don't understand. It's like you have a three point shooter, two people setting screens at a free throw, and you just let your big man work on the low block like one on one with their matchup. Um, and it's just so unorthodox in the game with your basketball that a lot of us weren't really playing well with it. But yeah, the it reason really it's named Germany is because it's it's the lineup that the German national team used in, in world, championships. world championships this year. Yeah. And so yeah, so the two bigs faster. and. It's it's really a blessing that we had uh, two bigs that have really good chair skills yeah. and are really really good and and it didn't work early in the year. Uh, I would say Edinburgh is less fundamentally sound than the Missouri team we, we tried, tried it on. on. Yeah, uh, Missouri is coached by the Team USA Paralympic coach and uh, they're just very fundamentally sound. Our our bigs had a big advantage here and it really showed. Yeah, uh, got to two points and then uh, White or Edinburgh's big hit uh hit a pretty much a dagger. Yeah. Uh, to yeah. go up by four, and then we had to start fouling, and, and we couldn't claw our way back. But that was a really encouraging performance by the Illini. It, it was great. So, was like, yeah. let me ask you this. Yeah. It's, it's been, I think it's fair to say that it's been a pattern this season where you have leads, but you can't finish the game. I would say, actually, that actually, we I would say it's the have opposite. deficits that are really yeah. bad, and then we push into it, get so close to coming back, and then yeah. that's where we fall. What, what is the mindset like, knowing that you're so close? Yeah. I mean, it's just, we, after every tournament, we come yeah. back, and, and, and we know things we got to work on, and the things are different almost every time yeah. on things we got to work on. Yep. And so it's just getting back in the gym and working harder, and... And one thing Coach is really pushing on is, is effort. Uh, the, we're, yeah. we're in the home stretch, and so everything we do has to be done with effort and with speed and uh, with intensity. Because if you don't bring that intensity in practice, you're not going to bring it in games. Right. And so right. uh, I think that's something that we brought the last week and a half or so. Yes, sir. Uh, and so I, I think that that's going to be something that's going to be fixed for Nationals this week. Yeah, I would also say to go along with that is that I think our team is really young. Um, we got a lot of players on the team. We got, what, like two freshmen starting? I, I wouldn't say Willie's really a true freshman playing on the international level, but we have a lot of young assets and not that um, they don't know how to play wheelchair basketball because they're here for a reason, but just more on the lines of just getting rattled. They're like, learning. Yeah, they're learning. College basketball is completely different than juniors basketball yeah. is, right. um, and even I didn't expect it. I'm pretty sure Josh wasn't ready his freshman mm, year nope. either, but like as you grow, you get better and you learn. I think that's the biggest thing for us is that we just got to get better. Yeah, I mean, there's not a, there is not a single senior on the Illinois team. Yeah. Senior night didn't happen this year because <laughs> there was no reason for it to yeah, happen. So. And so uh, I think it's really promising that we're this close with so many great teams yeah. Yeah. Uh, this yeah. year when we're going to have the exact same team back next year. Yeah. But the thing about it is we got to think about it this year because we have an opportunity to win a championship at home. Uh-huh. And yep. that would be cooler than anything else that we could possibly do in our time here. Yeah. So. So yeah, so the last game of the weekend and up 
Uh, this was the game before the Edinburgh game against the Auburn Tigers. Yeah, uh, played Auburn multiple times. That one was was a runaway game for the Illini. Sixty-one to forty-four is your final in that game. Uh, the Illini shot forty percent in that game, uh, and the leading score was Tom or Willie Benmore took with twenty-nine points on eleven of eighteen shooting. A really efficient game for Willie. Uh, hit some threes. He was three for six from three-point land. Uh, then Thomas Duffy, our screen shooter, had 14 <laughs> points, our one-trick pony. Uh, and then Kyle Jankowski had 11 points. So three Illini in triple digits was really a huge double thing digits. for us. <laughs> or sorry, did I say triple? I mean yeah. double digits. <laughs> and then uh, for the Auburn Tigers, Nick Omen, uh, the freshman of the year, I believe. He made uh, the all-freshman team. I, I know he was on the all-freshman yeah, team. Yeah, uh, got 11 points. And Blake Lofton, their senior, got 10 points. Those were the only two Auburn Tigers in double figures. Uh, so a really, really good game for us and, yeah. and a much-needed win. Yeah, I would um, agree. Coming into that game, it just kind of like we felt a little deflated, um, especially playing so well against Whitewater the day before. Um, but it was it was a good game. We played really well against a team that we know we should play really well against. Um, so it was a good game. Yeah, all right. And then so then we had a quick turnaround. We got back Saturday night, practiced Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. And then Thursday morning, we left for north of the border. We took an international trip to Toronto oh, yeah. uh, last week. And so, ooh, whoops, hold on. Uh, so Canada, uh, so was that what you expected out of the Canada tournament, Miles? Um, are you talking just performance-wise for us? Or? Yeah, performance-wise, uh, um, trip-wise. I think that the, I would just like to say the trip was great. I love yeah. the trip. I love Toronto. I want to go back. As much as we yeah. talk about we're not going back because of the refs, I want to go back. I don't care about the refs, all right? It was a grand time. But, um, no, I think the trip was good for us. I think we, we lost – that last Edinburgh game that we think we I think we mm -hmm. all wanted to win and we should have won. But um, overall, I think the trip was a really good productive trip for us as a team. And since it doesn't count for college, it was really good to see us play like and, and treat it as if it was something really, really important. So. Yeah, uh, Toronto. So uh, for those of you that don't know, Toronto and Canada in particular have what they call the Canadian Academy, which is where people go and, and play wheelchair basketball like as a job almost. Yeah, uh, it's, it's people that are going to make the national team. And since we were, we were at the Pan Am Center, which is – a really beautiful facility right in Scarborough of Toronto. It's nice. Um, Toronto's a great city, and, and I wish we got to explore it a little bit more, but we had we had work to do. Yeah. And so that began with uh, Toronto D2 as we played first. So Toronto Division's two team and the NWBA. It's an adult team. Uh, had some really good players. A lot of their women's national team, Canada's women's national team, was on that team. Yep. Uh, so that was a last-second buzzer-beater win. Thomas Duffy hits the screenshot for the win with about Four seconds to go, yeah. and the Illini hold on to win. Uh, we were up 33-26 to 26 at the half. Uh, the largest lead of the game was seven points for either team. It was really a, a back-and-forth contested wow. battle. Yeah. Um, they had one uh, woman on their team, uh, Katie uh, Dana Duno, <laughs> uh, who had 33 points on 16 of 23 shooting. It's, it was one of their big. She... She destroyed us. It was she was giving us the work. She was giving us the work. Uh, really, really great player, um, and so she was their leading scorer. Uh, and then Derek, uh, a big man for them, had ten points. But other than that, nobody else really scored yeah. uh, for Toronto D two. And then for us, Thomas Duffy, leading scorer this game with twenty points. Gabe Dembrader at fifteen. Willie only had six points. My boy Miles Hill had five points. Noah Hotchkiss was six points. Um, overall, a really, really good team performance. We got to run a lot of different lineups. Yeah, It was our first game at Toronto. What did you think of this game in particular? Um, I think the best part about it was our mindset coming in was that it, we were going to treat it like a practice. So, it was, I mean, like that's about as official as you can say is we're not trying to necessarily win this game. It's more of just play it to, to grow and to learn. And then as we got down the stretch, we started playing the game, realized it was really competitive and like, hey, we can actually win this if we put it together. I think it... It showed us a lot because um, usually our close games are our really gritty games. I know we had a couple in Auburn uh, earlier this year, just kind of like close games that were really defensive-minded. Mm -hmm. But this game was like a really a cultivation of both. Like both teams were going really hard, and, and we were playing great defense, and they were scoring. And we were, they were playing great defense, and we were still scoring. It was a really good game just to watch in general, and it really – I thought we grew a lot yeah. from the game. So One really interesting uh, stat that I found was that uh, the Illini – Outs or uh, points off turnovers, the Atlanta outscored Toronto nineteen to nothing. Mm. That's really the story of the game. There is that we didn't really allow them to get a lot of points off turnovers because yeah. we didn't turn over the ball that much. Yeah, uh, and they turned over the ball significantly more than we did. So that was 
really, really good to see. Uh, the officiating is something you brought up. <laughs> it was it was mind-boggling, some of the stuff that bo- <laughs> both teams got away with. I mean, I know yeah. bad officiating is, is stuff that, you know, both teams have to deal with. Right. Uh, but, like, just talk about some of the things that, like, these refs let, let us get away with. Yeah. Um, the biggest thing was Bushy, Coach Bushy got his first tech. Um, yeah, he did. As a coach this weekend for uh, counting how many seconds one of the Canadian <laughs> players was in the key. So... Just to refresh us on the rules of wheelchair basketball, <laughs> offensively you're only allowed to be in the paint for three seconds, three. Um, unless it. I unless it was five. Uh, that's that's defensively in NBA, yeah. but oh, okay. offensively for us you're only allowed to be in there for three unless you're in the shooting position. And but she was counting how long this player had been <laughs> in the key, and and he's like five, six. Seven, and as soon as he hit eight, the ref just teched him up, and we were just all like, "No warning!" Wow, that, yeah. You know, for being <laughs> coach's first technical, it was, it was really uh, it was, it was anticlimactic a, yeah, almost. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. I was also, like, man, he could have done more if he wanted a real tech, you know what I'm saying? But Yeah, and, and my favorite part about that was, like, what was the number eight that made it so yeah, good? Yeah, you know like, what I'm saying? <laughs> like, seven's fine, but the minute you get to eight, it's a technical. That's tech. <laughs> um, they missed a lot of stuff. It was really hard to get a, f- a foul in these yeah. games. Yeah, um, they let you get away with a lot of stuff, which is good because because I think one of the things we really wanted to work on this week was being physical with yeah. bigger teams and, and playing through contact and playing well. through contact. So I, I think ultimately it was a good thing. It was just frustrating towards the beginning. Yeah, uh, I think as we got into the game, and especially you could see it in our Edinburgh game because mm-hmm. I think Edinburgh just got there and they weren't ready for the officiating, but we were just like, yeah, just be physical and make the refs make calls. And they, of course, as we were saying, it, it was a very physical game, so we looked rattled at the beginning of it. But as it progressed, we just started learning, like, hey, man, just be physical with your chair. And if they call it on you, then you're just out of luck. But it was a good game, and we played really hard. So, Yeah, so uh, the second game was Toronto D1. So that's uh, Division One. That is the top division in the National Wheelchair Basketball Association. Yeah. Uh, there are some really, really great players on that Canadian team. Yeah. Uh, the Illini fall 49-38. to 38. It, was, it was kind of a low-scoring affair. Yeah. Um, kind of a defensive battle. Once again, shooting percentage plagues the Illini. Uh, yeah. We shot 27% to their 46.8%. Uh, our leading scores in that game, Miles Hill came in and gave a lot of big moments, <laughs> had 16 points. It was kind of a coming out show for you. What? Yeah, the weekend was a coming out party. For yeah, a there, there was a lot of Miles moments we're going to talk about here in a minute. <laughs> uh, but <laughs> what what did you think about that game in particular? I mean, 16 points is, is a yeah. career high for you. Yeah, well, I think the biggest thing about it was becoming a product of the offense. We see it a lot with Duffy. Uh, we call him a one-trick pony, but he's not really a one-trick <laughs> pony. We just make him our product of the offense. So we run a power side, ball swings middle, and the defense has to choose who they want to, to guard because we have one out, and they choose to leave Duffy because of the product of the offense. That's what we saw a lot. Well, that's what I saw a lot was a lot of just reads as open cuts because I had to choose somebody, and they were leaving me. So that's where a lot of the points came from early. We just, you know, might as well go in there, take some shots. Yeah. So. Miles, or so Miles had 16 points. The next leading scorer was Noah Hotchkiss with eight points. And the thing about it is you were pretty efficient, 7 for 15, almost 50% shooting. Yeah. And you were on fire at the beginning, just on fire. I think you started like six for eight or six for seven. Yeah, the second half was what really got me. I remember it. I was like, dang, I just need to. Yeah. I was thinking too much on the layups. I was like, I just need to take this. Yeah, up. so so you had 16. Noah Hotchkiss had eight. Willie had eight. And uh, Noah was four for 12. Willie was two for 17. Um, and then Gabe was one for seven for two points. And Thomas was two for two for four points. Uh, efficient. Um, so, yeah, so <laughs> shooting percentage was once again a problem. Uh, the leading scorer for Toronto D1 was Dion Green, uh, kind of a tweener type player, I would say. He was he was shifty. Yeah, that he was, was fast. Fair. He had 16. Uh, Wesley Johnson had 13, and Lee Melamick had 10 points on uh, five for five shooting. That's really efficient. So uh, that was a game that both of these first two games really didn't matter for us in terms right. of record because they're on the college division. Um, it was kind of more exhibition games for us, but I thought mm-hmm. it got us a lot of good experience with people who uh, were were better or or, or were more physical than what we're used to. Yeah, Yeah. most definitely. I would actually say the D2 game was a little more physical than Mm -hmm. the D1 game was just because, man, that dude Derek was huge. I was not prepared for a dude that big to be playing right there with you. And like, and with the referees not calling anything, he he would back into you and hold you. And yeah, like, whoa, this is not what I was prepared for. But I, I think the D1 game also was a really good one for us because 
I think they were a little more fundamentally sound than the D2 team was. Yeah. Um, and as you can tell through the physicality, like Derek was being physical, but he was also doing stuff that is not typically legal yeah. to do. So um, as great as a player as both the teams had, I think the D1 team was more like tactical with it, and that's what really ended up getting us. I, of course, the shooting percentage doesn't help. She was 27%, yeah. but that's what I got from it. All right. Here, here's up next is we played Edinburgh twice. So we played Edinburgh like three times in two weekends because <laughs> uh, we're going to play them twice here in Toronto. So uh, the first game was a win for the Illini. The Illini grind out a win or really run away with the win, 53-36. to 36. Our largest lead was 47-26, to 21-point uh, lead. Uh, there were only two lead changes. Uh, the longest run for the Illini was a 22-2 to two run mm. uh, that went out <laughs> there. Uh, a big one there. So, uh, leading scorers in that game, Gabe Dembraber has 14 points. Thomas Duffy and Willie Morchek both have 10 points. Oh, and Kyle Jankowski had 11 points in this game. Uh, yeah, j- we got to run a lot of, of different lineups in this game. There was a lot of physicality. There was, it was the first time all season it felt like we were one defense. And, yeah. and every, all five players were really buying into to, right. to that. Yeah, um, yeah. so what, what did you think of this game, Miles? Yeah, we say it all the time. Um, our defense is what's going to take us to where we want to be. Um, our offense is, I wouldn't say perfect, but it's pretty good. Um, just with the assets we have and the, the roles that each of us play, we play like just perfectly for the offense that we that we want to run. So um, defense is what's really got us, and I would say that game was the best defensive performance we've had uh, all year, as you were saying. So that's really the biggest takeaway from it was our defense won us the game, and then our offense was – Mediocre. I don't think we shot that great. We didn't shoot poorly, but we didn't shoot that great necessarily. So yeah. So one thing that's different. The rules were a little bit different. So we played quarters when we were in Toronto, yeah. uh, which is a little bit different. I, I kind of liked it a little bit better. I don't know about you. I like quarters. It keeps it keeps yeah. my hype level low. Yeah, you know, and, and it <laughs> keeps keeps the game moving and allows you to have like kind of a built-in timeout. Yeah. But the only quarter in which Edinburgh outscored the Illini was the first quarter. They led twelve to ten, but then uh, Illinois went on a sixteen to two run in the second quarter, a ten to eight run in the third quarter. And a 17 to 14 run in the fourth quarter to really run away with it. So it was really a complete game for the Illini, yeah. which is something that uh, Avery had brought up about finishing a complete game. Yes. Um, it also helps uh, when you shoot 48% to their 32.7%. Yeah. Uh, shooting percentage is huge in basketball it because is. the only way to score is to get that ball through the rim 10 feet above the ground. <laughs> and so when you shoot at a higher percentage, you generally win basketball games. Uh, so that was that was a kind of a confidence booster for us. Also, yeah. how many shots did you guys take? How many shots did we take? Yeah. That's a good question. We took 50 shots. Okay, so... So we were 20, 24 for 50, so we were one shot away from 50%. Okay, so that statistic is legitimate. Yeah. 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 <laughs> it was a lot of shots. We were actually 23 of 42 from two-point range and one for eight from three. Our effective field goal percentage was 49 to their 32.7. All right, so... So, yeah. That's pretty good. Also, our rebounding was really good in the game. We out-rebounded them by six. So uh, a struggle in the past that was really strong in that yep. game. Really a yep. complete game. Yeah. So then we had one more game mm-hmm. uh, against Edinburgh on Sunday morning at 8 a.m. This game did not turn out the way we wanted it to after uh, the morning game or, or after the game the night before. Uh, the Illini will fall by 10 points, 57 to 47. Um, what did you think about this game? Um, I think that it started off slow for us. I think that uh, Edinburgh's good, as we can see, we've lost them three times this year. They're they're a good basketball team, and I think that um, I I think Kevin came in with with a little more aggressiveness than he did the game before. Um, I don't know what his stats for with the game before versus the game after, yeah. but I could just tell from just the like just the aggressiveness that he brought, like not in a bad way, like he was fouling hard or anything. Um, but just in a way that, like, he was just ready to play and uh, be in a better mindset. I think the same thing that happened with us was not being ready for um, the physicality of it. I think that's yeah. what got Edinburgh the first game as well. And not saying that we couldn't have beat them, but I just don't think they were ready for it. And the second game, they brought that intensity as well. Yeah, they, they brought the intensity the second game. I think they finally got used to the refereeing, and yep. and they have some guys that are bigger than us, and I think that really helped them once they figured out, oh, we can like yep. be super physical yep. uh, because the refs aren't calling anything. Uh, Kevin, as you talked about, had 11 points on 5 of 9 shooting. Uh, the leading scorer for the Edinburgh Fighting Scots mm-hmm. uh, was Jacob Spillers. He was 6 for 17 but had 19 points. Uh, and then Chase Wolf, uh, their best player, yeah, in my yeah. opinion, had 13 <laughs> points uh, on 4 of 10 shooting. Uh, we really held him better than we thought we would. 
yeah. uh, the whole weekend. And so that was really good. That was a good point. Um, point. Will Speed, their normal class one, didn't play. Someone who was really surprising was Zachary Cradock, who we hadn't seen before, was four for six with eight points. That was something that we did not game plan for. No, I don't think any of us were ready for him to hit the free throw jumpers that he hit. Yeah. I think, I mean... He had, like, four straight free throw jumpers. Yeah, well, the thing about it was it was the right reads defensively. And then he shoots, and we're like, oh, we'll be fine. And then he, he was starting hitting them all, like, whoa, this is not what we were anticipating. So Yeah, it was almost a flip from uh, the first game and the... Uh, Edinburgh in this game shot 45% and we shot 33%. Mm. And so that's the flip in yeah. uh, the game. Did did fatigue play a role at all? I don't, I don't think so. Yeah. I, I don't think we play well in morning games. It's uh-huh. been something that's plugged us for some reason. It has, actually. Uh, uh-huh. But I, I don't think that really had anything to do with it. I just think we got outshot that game and out, yeah. out pushed, out physical. Yeah, well, I think... Um, another thing about it was Edinburgh started to sag a lot more on our shooters um, than they did in the yeah. first game, and I that's, mean that's that's true. One. So a lot of the offense is pick and roll, and so for that to happen in wheelchair basketball, you have to have the right. defense willing to jump out on your shooter, and they decided that hey, they're going to beat us on the outside, and we're not going to jump anybody, and uh, right. just uh, the outside shot just wouldn't fall right. in that game. Right. Uh, so for that game, uh, Gabe Dembraber and Thomas Duffy both had 14 points to be leading scores. Uh, no other line I hit double digits. Noah Hotchkiss had seven. Miles Hill had four. Willie Morchuk had four. And Kyle Jankowski and I had two points apiece. Um, so, yeah, just a disappointing way to end the weekend. But, I mean, what did you take away from the Canada tournament at the end of the day? Yeah, I think uh, even though, like you said, disappointing way to end the weekend, I think our first three games were, were just about as well as we could have asked them to go. Of course, we could have beat Toronto D1, but, I mean, like I said, coming into the D2 game, we didn't expect to win. Coming into D one game, we weren't necessarily coming in for a win. We were looking to get reps in, play better defense, play our offense. And I think that overall that it was a really great tournament for us. Um, got us a lot of uh, just – I thought a lot of confidence came from the tournament for our team. So um, I think that – and that's shown a lot in the past week and a half of practice as well. I think our practices are getting better as well. So Yeah, all right. So after this quick break, we'll be right back uh, to talk about Nationals, which if you're listening to this show, you need to be at. So uh, stick with us here on Rolling Line Eye on WPGU 107.1. Hello and welcome back to Rolling Line Eye on WPGU 107.1. I am once again Joshua Joins, joined as always by Avery Schaefer and Miles Hill and Andrew Sclair with UPTV. If you liked what you heard today and you want to see our faces that you can't see when you're listening to on the radio, tune into UPTV Wednesday at uh, 9.30 p.m. I believe, no, it's, it's 9 to 9.30, 9 to 9.30 yeah. uh, on Wednesday. Right in time to go to the event we're going to talk about, uh, the College Division Nationals for Wheelchair Basketball are coming to Champaign. It begins Thursday at 8 a.m. and ends Saturday at noon with the national champion being crowned in both the men's and the women's division. Yeah. Um, so a lot of action coming up. Uh, let's actually start on the women's side for okay. a second. I know we didn't talk about this before the yeah. break, but you know both things are happening. So our women will play their first game Thursday at 2 p.m. against the University of Alabama. Yep. What are the things that our women are going to look to do when they play Alabama in the 2-3 game? Mm. Um, I think we, I think our team is actually a very good offensive team when they, they run their sets pretty well. They run uh, Erica, Emily, and Allie. Mm-hmm. Uh, kind of like their power side middle, and they do a really good job of that. And then kicking it to Marley on the offside because she's a she's a shooter, first team All American. That's my class one. Yeah. Anyways, <laughs> um, but yeah, she uh, that team is really good offensively. I think that's what we need to do is is work on the offense. Our defensive end is gonna see its struggles because of the size that Alabama mm-hmm. has against us. Um, and I'm not saying you know just concede points because that's yeah. definitely how you lose basketball games. But just working on our defensive end, but also trying to capitalize on our offensive opportunities for the ladies would really be a big thing. Offense is going to be huge for the ladies, I think. Uh, You know, you have to score points to win basketball games. Right. And Alabama is going to put up a lot of points just because of their size. They're they're very blessed with three or four true bigs. Right. Um, And so they can supplement and they stay fresh. And so that's something that you have to work on on defense, but also – they're going to score, so you have to score on offense as well. Yep. It's just going to happen. So yep. that's there. And then um, the there's four women's teams coming. Whitewater against UTA. The University of Texas Arlington UTA has yep. uh, three Paralympians yep. on that team. Abby Duncan, 
Rose Hollerman, who's arguably the best women's player in the world right now. Yeah. And Morgan Wood. I would uh, say Morgan best. Wood was out with injury last time we checked, but I would not be surprised to see her back for nationals. Yeah. Um, so uh, that'll be a game to watch. Uh, UT is always fun to watch, so uh, come out and watch the women's division. Uh, the women play at 2 p.m. Yeah. Now on the men's side, mm. uh, the men, the Illini men, are the number six seed coming into the tournament. Uh, they will play the number three team, the University of Texas at Arlington yeah. men's team. Who they just beat. Yeah, we beat in November at UTA. Yep. Uh, so UTA is going to be looking for uh, vengeance. Uh, so we're going to need a crowd there. We're going to need them to be loud. Oh, yeah. uh, let them know what's up. Uh, we actually practiced this morning at the State Farm Center, uh, which was really, really cool. And, and it was kind of cool to take in the atmosphere before game day so we yeah. can kind of, you know, not have the shock and awe factor of yeah. playing in an arena like that yeah. uh, that early. So that was cool. Um, so what are you expecting from UTA? Um, UTA is a good basketball team. Um, didn't they beat Bama this past weekend? They did beat Bama yeah, this past weekend. Yeah, they're a really good basketball team. Um, and like we said earlier this year, when they run, they win. All right? So if they run and they're moving on fast breaks and, and we let them play at the speed that they want to play or we try to keep up with that pace, we're not going to win that basketball game. That's what I'm anticipating from UTA is to try to smooth the ball. And uh, they have a good freshman, Zach. I think that's his name, Zach Blair, Zach right? Blair, Zach. Yeah, he's a really good player. Um, so that's someone I would actually look out for. I don't know if he's um, starting just because of the the way their classifications are set up. But he's a really good basketball player, especially coming off the bench. If he is coming off the bench, that's like having a starter come off your bench. So he's yeah. a really good basketball player. we got to play. 40 minutes of basketball, good defense, and, and keeping it at our tempo. And yeah. Play Coach keeps emphasizing keeping it at our tempo. Yeah. Uh, it, when we run our offense of, effectively, it's a, it's a more slow-paced game. It's not slow-paced, but it's more slow-paced, and we use the shot clock, yeah. and that reduces the number of possessions and fast-break opportunities that UTA has, which is what they live and die on. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. I think the, the score of the game we beat them was 81-71, to 71, I believe. Yeah. So that is I a think that was very high-scoring high uh, wheelchair basketball game. Definitely hit the over. Yeah, and that <laughs> game, uh, so that would be Thursday at 4 p.m. But there's other games and other teams that I do want to talk about. Yeah. So the tournament kicks off Thursday at 8 a.m. and the 8-9 playing game. There's nine men's team coming in, yep. and 8-9 play each other for the for the wonderful opportunity of playing the number one seed. <laughs> uh, and so that's Auburn and the University of Nebraska Omaha. What are you expecting out of that game? Um, I'm as you were talking earlier during the break. I think Auburn's going to win that game, but it should be a good one. Um, I think. Uno has some outside threats. Like they're very similar teams mm-hmm. with uh, really like a, a one shooter that they really want to have with the ball um, and maybe a secondary player with it as well. But for the most part, their shooting threats are kind of um, far and few in between there. Mm-hmm. But they're, they're both very, uh, very similar teams, so it should be interesting to watch how both of them stack up defensively and offensively. But I think Auburn will take it um, just because I think they have the speed mismatch on them. These are the I have a score oh. prediction on that one. A score prediction? Oh. Uh, 51 46. Yeah, I was going to say 50. I was going to say 50 to like 42 or something like that, but it, w- it shouldn't be too high of a scoring yeah. game, I don't think. I'm guessing 51 46. Auburn pulls it out. What's yeah. interesting is that both of these are the two newest teams in the division, college yeah. division, coming in with the last three or four years. Yeah. Um, UNO has some older players, some seniors that are graduating. Yeah. Auburn has a lot of young, young. freshman players, a lot like yep. us. Um, so I'm looking, Nick Oman uh, made first team all rookie yep. uh, for Auburn. He's a very, very great player, probably their yes. best player right now. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it's going to be the shooting threat to watch out for. Sam Armis on yep. the inside. On uh, the Nebraska Omaha side, you're going to have to look out for Jeremy Romy, the senior, yeah. and uh, Josh Meyer. He's uh, a shooter. The, he's a shooter. They're both shooters. So those are the kind of the four people I'd look out for that game. Uh, that is once again a playing game to play number one seed Thursday at 8 p.m. But there's a lot of games in between. And so then at 10 a.m., yep. it's number four, uh, University of Missouri versus number five, Edinburgh. What is your position in that game? What's that going to look like? It's going to be uh, it's going to be a good one. I think, though, most importantly, that Missouri will win. Um, I think Missouri will actually probably pull away towards the end. I, I think it to Mizzou as well. Yeah, I think yeah. Mizzou will take it probably with – last 30 minutes is when they'll start to really pull away. I think they'll consistently have like a four or five point lead. And then towards the end, I, that's my prediction is that they'll pull away. But Edinburgh and Missouri, they're they're pretty good teams. Um, but I don't think they, they match up well against each other. I think no. Mizzou has more speed than Edinburgh does. Um, not to say that Edinburgh yeah. is slow because they're fast, yeah. but I think Mizzou has more speed and they're just more fundamentally sound. What's interesting is Edinburgh beat Missouri. 
uh, yeah. this year. So, yeah. so anything is possible. I, I, I tend to be with you on there. Missouri is, I think, going to win that game. They're fundamentally sound. Uh, Coach Likens is going to have them ready for this tournament. Yeah. Um, it's also a little bit less of a drive. Yeah. Um, so for an early game like that, I think Missouri is going to pull away. And I, I would say it's going to be about a 15 point game. Yeah. I would say they have five points yeah. for most of the game, but then Mizzou, I'd say pull, pull Six, away. 64 50, maybe. Yeah. I, I, my, my I'm guess. I'm going to go with uh, 75 yeah. 60. Ooh. Ooh, I was going to say Ooh. 71. Like, you think they're going to score 70? I think Mizzou will get the 70. Really? Yeah, Interesting. I think so. Which is, they will. Yeah, it's a, it's, it's a bold take, but I yeah, think Mizzou will get the 70. It's a bold take because uh, they're generally known as more of a grinded out team. So, yeah. So that was kind of my thoughts there. All right. Then uh, there's going to be a break for some of the women's games that we discussed earlier. Sorry, mm-hmm. I didn't have the times for that. Um, then at the men's tournament be, or continues at 6 p.m. Yep. As S or sorry, there's a 4 p.m. game of us, and then the 6 p.m. game of SMSU and Alabama, one versus seven. But Two. this one has a interesting twist to it. We are we are hitting the button. We don't have any button in here, but just pretend there's a siren going off. Uh, we think SMSU has a chance as the seventh seed to upset number two Alabama. Yep. Miles, tell the people why. So we have our good friend, our good friend Zeus. Used to go to the University of Illinois. Grand double leg. Amputee. Amputee. One of the fastest guys I've ever seen play basketball. I'll tell you an anecdotal story. We're playing scrimmaging at the summer camp here at the Arc. <laughs> and uh, Zeus is on offense. He's facing the goal going this way. Rebound goes long to Erica, and she's going the other direction. And Corey, who also played here at the University of Illinois, who and is also, also played, very fast. Yeah, is very fast and plays professional wheelchair basketball in Germany now. Mm-hmm. The, the, Corey is the fastest dude I've ever seen in my life. Corey is going down on a fast break layup. Zeus, knowing that he doesn't have the time to turn around to catch him, starts going backwards, then chase down blocks and tilts and blocks Corey out of bounds while going backwards and falls on his back. It's the craziest thing I've ever seen in wheelchair basketball. But unfortunately, he hasn't been playing for most of the year for SMSU. So that's why they're put at that seven seed. But man, with Zeus and, and their other 4-0, I think, or 4-5, yeah, Walter, Walter, those two are going to be deadly together. I think Bama will still pull it out, but it should be a really, really good game to watch. Yeah, I'm really interested to see because Bama, the thing about it is Alabama and uh, SMSU run very similar lineups. lineups exactly. Both of them have two really great bigs, right? Uh, play two low class players, and then one midpoint player. Yep. And so it's really going to be a battle of the bigs. And it, it'll be interesting to see how Zeus and Walter match up against uh, Oppie from Australia yep. and Ignacio, who dropped 40 points on us. Uh, I honestly think Ignacio is the X factor in this game. I do too. If Ignacio ha- plays a great game like he played against us, like yeah. he's played against other teams, I think Alabama wins this game. But if he struggles, I Ooh. think Alabama is going to be on the ropes. Yeah. No, I agree. SMSU is a really, really good basketball team when they're healthy and and. And the Ooh. thing about it is, is a lot of their games they've been there's a lot of snow in Marshall, Minnesota, so yeah. they have not they've been blizzarded in in some tournaments. Mm-hmm. So a lot of the games were in first semester when uh, Zeus was not playing, right? And so that's that's a whole different ball game. That is not the same team. That is not a seven seed. No, it's so not. That's kind of the luck of the draw, but uh, it'll be really interesting to see what happens with that game. Yeah. All right, and then the last team that we need to talk about for Thursday is that. 8 p.m., the winner of the 8-9 plays the University of Wisconsin-Whitewater. Yep. I'm expecting a 20-30 to 30 point win yeah. for Whitewater. Uh, they have a lot of really... Either way? Uh, it wait. doesn't matter who they play. Either way, yeah, it'll either be a 20-30 point win. And it'll be a 20-30 to 30 point win at least. Uh, Dylan Fishbach is going to have 30 points. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then who's their so, other big? Sadell's going to eat Sadell. pretty much. There's, uh, so uh, the thing about it for Whitewater is Whitewater is a very experienced team, and they have three major players on that team that are going to be senior or are seniors and will be playing yep. their last tournament. So they're going to come in hungry, so I think they're going to destroy in that first game. I do too. Uh, the second game, it will be questionable seeing Bama. They they match up very well. Not Bama, sorry. Um, seeing Missouri, I think Missouri is, is actually a pretty – they're really good. I think Missouri, really? I think Missouri is really good when they play like – when they play their best, I don't think they'll beat Whitewater, but they'll definitely give them something if Whitewater is is anywhere but their five best. Five point as well. difference so, uh, between Missouri and Whitewater, yeah. five supposedly to ten. five to ten. Yeah, I don't know about five, but maybe a little under ten. I don't I don't know about five. Five is a little close, but I'm going with five. <laughs> well, I like it. Yeah. So both. those those semifinal games. Yeah. So the, we're talking about quarterfinal games is round one. Uh, semifinal games will be Friday at four p.m. That would be the game that we would be playing in should we beat. 
uh, UTA. UTA, and we'd playing winner of SMSU Alabama. So it's really interesting that we talk about that. Yep. Uh, preparing the same way either way because of how some of those lineups are. Mm-hmm. Then on the other side of the bracket, Friday at 2 p.m., so before our game, winner of Edinburgh, Missouri, takes on winner of Whitewater, Auburn, UNO, whichever one that is. Yep. Uh, and then Saturday at noon is the final. Then Whoever that'd be, champion. I would highly recommend, if you've never seen the game of wheelchair basketball, to come out to that game, yep. uh, whether or not we're playing, because I can't predict the future. I think we'll be playing in it. But, oh, yeah. But yeah. even if we're not, the the level of basketball and the level of athleticism is something that I don't think people Understood. will have experienced or seen before. Yep. And there, like a lot of sports that people talk about that are like less popular, you don't know what it's like until you've seen it in person. Yep. And so seeing it in person is going to make it an entirely different ball game. You need to come out and watch it. Uh, that's going to be Saturday at noon. So I know a lot of the students are going to be on spring break, but the people in the Champaign-Urbana community, come out and watch us. It's free. Yep. Uh, find Miles and I. Find anybody on the team. We would love to talk to you. We'll take Find pictures me. with you. Avery will be there covering it. So, yeah. so come, come and talk to us. Uh, we'd love to have you guys out. And uh, absolutely, a lot of alumni are coming back. The 1969 mm. uh, championship team who yeah. won it in what was then called Assembly Hall are returning. It'll be really fun to hang out with them on Thursday night. So a lot of stuff going on, a lot of festivities. It's f- all free. All, all free. free. Parking's free. Entrance is free. I think there'll be concessions there that are not free. So <laughs> it's not free. Um, but come out and watch it, and, and we'd love to meet with you and talk to the community. It's going to be a great event. Yep. It's going to be a great one. It's Regardless of the, the outcome for either Illinois team, women or men, it's going to be a great atmosphere. It's going to be a good weekend yeah. for us. So. All right, Miles, kind of ending on kind of a, a thoughtful thing here. Yeah. As the season winds down uh, as a freshman, what are you going to take away from this season? What am I going to take away from this season? Um, I think that growth is the biggest thing that I can try to measure myself with. Uh, I think coming in, I had a really like strict mindset of especially being a 2 when I came in. Where it was very different. Um, this, this season has gave me a lot of ups and downs, personal life and, and basketball. But I think being classified as a 2 I thought coming in like, yeah, I'm pretty sure I'd be starting at 2 mm-hmm. Um And then it changed. Uh, and that threw me off. Like, well, now I'm pretty sure I'm sitting on the bench for the rest of the season. <laughs> and then it changed again. And I was like, well, I can work with this. And then I got the new chair just recently. Uh, so just a lot of things have been... It's really pretty. And I made sure I put the first dent on your new chair. <laughs> yeah, no, I really enjoyed the new chair. And, and just just like the ups and downs of the season, just it being unpredictable, but just trying to learn and grow every day. Um, going into practice with the mindset of like, hey, what can I do better today? Like perfectly. Or what, what can I just try to do better? Um, like whether it's something small of boxing out or trying to communicate more or just whatever, just try to grow as a player. And, and the biggest thing is that I know a lot of this stuff. Mm-hmm. Like we all know, you know, like pick and roll is how to do it. But like how we know how to do pick and rolls. But how do we become better at that? So just really trying to focus in on, on one thing and, and teach myself to get better. So. Absolutely. It's been an incredibly long season. Yeah, It's coming to an end and it's coming to an end at home. Yeah, This happens once, I think, a decade yeah. Uh, Nationals is in Champaign, so come out and watch it. We love the support. Uh, you guys have shown so much support this year, and we just need you one more time yep. to try to get us over the hump for a national championship. Um, so that's on that. One last thing I do want to bring up is if for the people that are listening that have Netflix, um, last week a documentary called The Rebound uh, Ooh, made yes. its way on Netflix, and it follows a team out of Miami, an adult wheelchair basketball team, uh, the Miami Heat. Wheels? Miami Heat Wheels, yep. The Miami Heat Wheels. Um, it's a really, really great documentary. It really gets into the sport. Um, if you've never been introduced to the sport before, it does a really good job of introducing yeah. you. It's called The Rebound. Check it out. It's on Netflix, and you already pay for the account, so it just takes an hour of your time. Yeah. Watch it. It's it's really, really good, and, and the filmmakers have worked for the NWBA for a long time. So yep. um, Thanks for the uh, recommendation. Yeah, yeah no, so, it's great. You should really watch it. I watched it on the way huh. to Canada. Yeah, actually, so it was funny. Like We all found out it was on Netflix on the way to Canada. Yeah. And so we all, we all had it on. We were watching it at the same time. So get out there, watch it. It's called The Rebound. Uh, Miles, Avery, you guys got anything else? Uh, no, man. Just, you know, everybody have a great weekend. You know, yeah. live life. Enjoy it. Everybody have a great week. Remember, come out to Nationals. Uh, Thursday, it kicks off. 4 p.m. for the guys, 2 p.m. for the ladies. We hope to see you there for Miles Hill, Avery Schaefer, and myself and uh, Andrew Scalera with UPTV. Remember, Wednesdays at 9 p.m. Uh, this has been Rolling Line. Keep it rolling, and we'll see you next week. Oh, yeah. That we-